You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio, available online at TalkDigitalNetwork.com. Welcome to HowStreet.com Radio, the online source for market opinions. Here is Jim Goddard. My guest is Keith Schaefer, editor and publisher of the Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin, the website OilAndGas-Investments.com. Welcome to the show, Keith. Jim, always a pleasure to have you. Crude oil prices are down today, but you point out they've had a marvelous ride over the past week. Oh, the last, uh, basically we hit, I think we, it was close to a 40% run between, uh, from 26 and change up to 36 and change, 37 and change. So that's a, a, a massive run. And I, uh, of course, the big question is, Jim, is that mostly short covering or is there some fundamentals there? And I think it's a little bit of both. So there was huge speculative short positions against oil for a long time. And it was just getting bigger and bigger and sentiment was getting worse and worse. But then what happened really was a couple things changed the game, I think, uh, last week. And that was that everybody had been uh, guessing, and that's, remember, we have to remember, Jim, that that's all any of these numbers are, are guesses, that uh, global demand would go from an estimated 1 to 1.2 million barrels a day this year all the way up to somewhere between 1.6 and 1.8 million barrels a day. Well, we had a 1 million, 1.8 million barrel a day increase in demand in 2015 when oil prices dropped. And if we were to have another one of those in 2016, well, that's obviously times two, 3.6 million barrels a day increase in demand over two years. That's a lot. And when you consider, Jim, that we lose about 3.5 million barrels a day through natural declines, like an oil well doesn't produce the same amount of oil every year till it dies. It, it slowly goes down as pressure in the reservoir declines. So if you lose 3.5 million barrels a day every year to natural declines, and so over two years, that's 7.2 million barrels a day, and add on to that 3.6 million barrels a day increase in demand, you're almost at 11 million barrels a day turnaround in just two years. So that's a big number. And I think that's really what um, started the, the, the rally last week, Jim. When, when I look around, all these short players, they didn't want to be any more short down under 30 bucks, but uh, they needed a, a good reason to cover those shorts, and they got it last week. And, and so you've also had, in addition to that, guys like Kyle Bass, the very high-profile fund manager, saying, hey, you know, because of the math that I just gave you, uh, this thing is going to turn around quicker than you thought. And uh, he literally went out on a limb and said, uh, maybe, I can't remember if this is 10 or two, 10 days, two weeks ago, he says, dear world, you've got 30 days to get long oil or you're going to be left behind. And so, uh, you know, I, I think there was enough, not just short covering, Jim, but kind of real questions whether this was going to be... Um, the bottom or not, and and I think a lot of long longer term players were willing to kind of get long oil down here and be long, as opposed to neutral or short. And I think so. I think some of the buying was real. I don't think it was all short covered. In England, they've discovered oil near Gatwick Airport, just outside of London. Is that going to affect the prices there? <laughs> Jim, I wouldn't have a clue. I've, I haven't heard anything about that. I have no. Uh, unless they found a trillion barrels, the answer is no. But uh, uh, no. Like, uh, the British uh, papers were calling it the Gatwick Gusher, but maybe that's just a nice alliterative headline. <laughs> but Jim, but they said, but not all the oil in Britain is in the North Sea. They said you have some right there next to London, and and you wonder, are they going to start looking for oil elsewhere in Britain where they hadn't looked before? Yeah, yeah, no idea, Jim. The, you know, the, the, the British uh, has a very active anti-fracking group, same as here, so the reality is who knows. And uh, what about the effects of fracking? I know a lot of people have said we don't want it here because of earthquakes or pollution of the water. Is that one of the uh, things the industry has to overcome? Oh, everywhere, absolutely. Do they have solutions for it? You mean to, like, fracking? Yeah. I, I mean, do you have ways not to cause pollution in groundwater or to cause earthquakes? Okay, so let, let, let's get something very clear. There, there, there's no pollution caused by fracking to groundwater. 
that 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 has been debunked many 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 times uh the the there's been literally tens of thousands no hundreds of thousands of wells drilled across north america in the last 7 years through fracking and the only time that there's ever been uh any groundwater contamination was either naturally occurring shallow methane or a bad cement job and the bad cement job really is only limited to to one situation in in canada and wyoming so there's no cause for anyone to be alarmed about groundwater or fracking earthquakes because of saltwater disposal wells putting the brine back down into dolomite that's a very real concern and that there's no doubt that that causes earthquakes um at, at the same time, uh, you're, you're looking at earthquakes, Jim, that are, um, you know, anywhere between one and three on the Richter scale. There might be one or two that's a little bit more than that. Uh, we're, we're not talking about a, a level that causes any real damage. Now, having said, I don't want to diminish the importance of, of, of trying to make sure we find a way to not do that anymore, but um, it, it's not anything that Chicken Little has to be worried about. Well, I think something that most people aren't aware of, all these so-called documentaries or movies that uh, portray the uh, oil sands as evil or oil drilling anywhere as evil, they're all financed by Middle Eastern countries that produce oil and gas. Is They want the North American industry shut down to give them an exclusive market. Most people aren't aware of that, but that's an actual fact. I'm not sure I'd agree with that, Jim. I, well, I would say, you know, that, that, that could be part of that. But here's what I'd tell you is that the main funders of those groups are actually Americans. So, uh, and, and actually there, there's nobody the targeting money? the, um, nobody of any significance targeting, uh, American tight oil. They're all the Americans targeting Canadian tight oil to keep our oil prices low. Uh, and held hostage. You you have all kinds of people through Tides Canada, um, the Moore Foundation, the Colette Foundation. Uh, th- those are the groups that we need to be worried about. Not, I'm I'm not very worried about whatever the Arabs are doing. They're, they're the low cost producer. I, I guess in 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 Europe, for sure, it's the Russians, Jim, that are very openly uh, campaigning against fracking, uh, Gazprom. But uh, I don't think there's a lot of Arab nations really trying to do a publicity job against uh, fracking in the U.S. It, it may be happening, but I don't think it's um, anywhere near as significant as what the Americans are doing to the Canadians or what the Russians are doing to the Europeans. But, Keith, but there are propaganda wars here going on, no doubt about it. It doesn't matter who's funding it. We, I mean, trying to separate the facts from the fiction. Now, that's the tough part here. Because, like I said, stuff that I thought was true, yep. a- and you're saying maybe it's not. Do we well, need some I'm kind not, of a I'm myth? I'm not going to say maybe it's not. I'm just going to yeah. tell you that 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 uh, I, I keep a pretty tight eye on this stuff, and and that it's not something that that's so big that we really need to worry about that. It's um, th- there's way more sinister and larger uh, activities happening on the PR front. Do we need kind of a myth busters when it comes to oil and gas? Because you have so many people opposed to pipelines when that's absolutely the sh- the safest way to ship it. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it, it's just a question of can, is, is there a, a debunker here? I, I think in this day and age, Jim, the reality is that everyone's got their own opinion. And with the Internet democratizing um, information and information flow, it's... Um, it's almost impossible to debunk stuff. People really have to kind of be aware and try and use their own noggin. Well, like I said, we need some kind of a myth busters for oil and gas because there's a lot of misinformation flying around. And, and that's the difference when you say there's information, but are the facts correct? That's the important thing. Mm-hmm. I mean, when you give the statistics about how safe modern uh, oil pipelines are versus trucks versus rail cars there's no doubt the safest way to get it from point a to b is through a pipeline and i've noticed now that they're finally putting out information you know we're moving pipeline proposed routes away from rivers and lakes how about that why couldn't they have done that before but it's taken so long for the you know the right moves to be made the right information to get out and 
perhaps that's one of the good reasons we do this show, Keith, is to get the facts out. Indeed. We'll have more with Keith Schaefer right after the break. Bird Dog, the ultimate tribute to the Everly Brothers and Simon and Garfunkel. Coming to Mission White Rock, West Vancouver. Buy online and save at ontourtickets.com. Welcome back. We're speaking with Keith Schaefer. Keith, Kuwait said today that it was not going to freeze production levels or cut back unless there was a consensus on everyone doing that. And that saw the price of crude fall slightly compared to the gains it made over the past week. Do we have to wait till this meeting on the 20th to find out if people will at least freeze production at the current level? No, no way. They're never going to freeze production. That's just ridiculous. It's not going to happen. But at the same time, Jim, uh, the, 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 the huge jumps in production by the Iraqis and the Saudis, I think, is, and, and the Russians are pro, is, is probably kind of done now. So, uh, you know, everybody went crazy and, and sent production soaring and, we, we probably are going to see some production increases, but probably not quite the same degree we did in 2014 and 2015. And, of course, when they proposed to freeze levels at the January production rates, January was a record high for a number of producers. Yep, that's true. Um, I, I, I just think this whole issue is a big tempest in a teapot. Um, you know, the... the Everyone keeps thinking, oh, the Saudis can't keep prices this low because they need $85 oil for their social benefit programs. It's like, well, you know, I'm, I'm not just not sure what to believe on that. I'm, uh, I don't run out and buy stock waiting to see what they're going to do or not do. I, I think you need to be kind of thinking that oil is going to stay between 40 and 45 bucks for the next number of years and just what kind of cash flows and cost reductions can the industry get going here over the next two or three years to to make that a viable industry. People forget that, you know, the, in, in, on the gas side, Jim, like natural gas producers have reduced their costs so dramatically in the last three or four years. They've just, you know, the oil guys have so much to learn from the nat gas guys. Now, of course, nat gas is a slightly smaller molecule. Uh, at the same time, you know, you, in Canada now, you're, you're seeing costs on some of these producers, all in costs, be under a dollar per million cubic feet or an MCF. That's just stunning. Nobody in, nobody would have ever guessed that three years ago. You'd have been laughed out of the room if they said, oh, I'll get my cost down to a buck in MCF. So, so even at these low prices, they can still make money. Well, they, well, ba- barely by the skin of their teeth really is what it comes down to. But, but, but I guess the point is, Jim, is they're bringing the cost structure down so that cash flows are way greater at, uh, higher levels, at, at lower levels than you would have thought. So no, at $2 gas, no one thought you'd make good money at $2 gas, yet in, in both the Marcellus and in the Montney in Canada, there are producers now uh, that will make pretty decent money at 2 bucks. What's the latest in, on the liquefied natural gas front? Oh, well, uh, I guess the big news since we last spoke was that Alta Gas uh, has shelved their uh, ideas to, to do production. And, and, it, and that did surprise me a little bit just because they were going to do the smaller FLNG, floating liquid natural gas, where uh, the ships are much cheaper um, than building a big land-based terminal. The, your lead times are much smaller. But really, what to me what that told us, Jim, was that LNG is a big, big man's game now. Uh, margins are so thin that you've got to be a Shell, a Petronas, a multi-multi-billion dollar multinational corporation to do any LNG work seriously. So uh, Alta Gas just didn't have that. Uh, they're a small, pretty small player, even in, by Canadian standards, in in the energy business. So um, it'll be interesting to see what everybody else does now. I'm still a big believer that Shell is going to say yes. Everyone thinks that Shell is going to say no and that everybody else is going to say no because gas prices are so low. But, Jim, people forget that, you know, Shell went to the mat right before the election writ was dropped last year to get the NEB, the National Energy Board, to extend their export permit from 25 to 40 years. So that's a they recognize that, you know, a, that it's a big asset, it'll produce for 40 years, and B, you're, they're going to hit two or three cycles through this. Some of the times you're going to be at the bottom of the cycle like we are now. Some of the times you're going to be at the top. And so when would you rather build your 
asset. I'd rather build my asset at the bottom of the cycle over the next four years. Uh, and then by the time 2020 comes around, or 2021 now, uh, nobody knows what the price of natural gas is going to be. Absolutely nobody. Uh, the futures curve is, should not be taken as a Bible by anybody. And um, I think it's a hell of a smart idea to go build your uh, plant right now when oil prices are low and Fort McMurray's not competing for labor. And so, I don't know. I, I, think, it's a hell, I think it's a great time to build an LNG facility, and I think Shell's going to say yes. And, of course, Shell is known for its long-term projects, and once they start sinking money into it, they don't like to back away. Well, yes and no. They 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 shelled Carmen Creek here this fall after spending two billion on dollars on that. But um, I, I I think that um, this this asset has has something very different going for it, and 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 that is that um, you know Australia's got a lot of gas coming on right now, and there's really nobody else in the English speaking world. There's no other Anglo-Saxon group that's going to have any major exports. You know, the, the states is going to um, Come out with a few bees a day, maybe over the next three or four years. Uh, maybe get it up to four BCF a day. So um, it's um, the world wants Anglo-Saxon LNG, where the rule of law is completely respected. They do not want to be completely beholden to Putin and Russia and the Qataris. So uh, I I think you're going to see more positive things come out of. PC LNG than most people do. And of course, Putin can't last forever. Okay. And that's one of the questions is, he might do a deal with you, but if somebody follows him, will they go along with that deal? He Signed contracts in Russia don't seem to mean much. Hell, so we'll see what happens there. Not, not, not a deal that I would do. He, he, someone like that would just, uh, you know, run circles around a guy like me, so... Uh, I, I would not be thinking about ever doing a deal with uh, the Russians. And, of course, they've turned off the natural gas to Ukraine at least twice. Why not again? <laughs> yep, it's true. Who knows? Keith, anything else you want to talk about today? Well, I guess we'll just see how how this oil rally lasts, Jim. That's the big thing, right? We'll, um, it's taken a breather today, and uh, I would think it would take a, a, a breather for another couple of days before we kind of start to see things settle out and where it's going to end up. Goldman and everybody else is saying, oh, this is too much too quick. But the reality is they don't know anything more than we do. In this democratization of information age, anybody who thinks Goldman knows anything more than us. And this very mild winter has encouraged the driving season to start early. I've heard people talking about doing road trips now. Why wait until the summer? Well, 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 I think that's one of the other stats that helped the oil market get get a run here, Jim, was that... uh, Last week, the January numbers for gas consumption came out, and it was up 7.7%. Like, that's massive. That is huge for the states. And you think that it was up 4% last year, so it's up a bigger percentage on a bigger base, like about 450,000 barrels a day more. That's a lot. That really is. So low prices have actually encouraged the use of gasoline, no doubt. Yep, you got it. Except in Vancouver, where we have the highest gasoline taxes in North America. Thank you, government. (laughs) <laughs> Keith, thanks for chatting with us Jim, God bless you, look forward to chatting with you in a couple of weeks Righto, my guest has been Keith Schaefer Editor and publisher of the Oil and Gas Investments Bulletin The website, oilandgas-investments.com You're listening to HowStreet.com Radio Find us on Twitter at Talk Digital Net Check out our YouTube channel, Talk Digital Network Comments or questions for the show can be sent to info at HowStreet.com I'm Jim Goddard Thanks for listening.